Hey everyone, I'm back. Yes, I was in the previous video, but a lot of people uh, were asking for uh, more. Uh, so I'm happy I just uh, made it back here. Today, I think we want to focus on something else. It's uh, more about delivering value for you rather than just presenting who we are and what, uh, what we do. A lot of the things we do relate to uh, reaching out to people who don't necessarily know us uh, today, either over LinkedIn and uh, email. We do that for our clients. And a lot of people ask us, how do you guys do this? How do you trigger people's attention and trigger replies so that you can connect your prospects with, uh, with the clients? And I want to share some of our secret sauce with you here. The fact is, there's uh, today more than 4 billion email users. It's more than Facebook and Twitter's users combined. There are more than 300 billion emails sent daily. So this is a fact, uh, and it shows also that email is definitely not outdated. There are three things that we want to see. So number one is the email deliverability, uh, meaning how do you make sure that your email is sent to someone's inbox. Number two, is the email open rate. So whenever you send the email, what makes that people open it? And then number three is how do you get people to reply to your email? Quite simple, actually. Uh, there's a few things that you should note. Uh, number one is the amount of email that you'll be sending. Every email account, be it Gmail, uh, Outlook, whichever you're, you're using, uh, has an email limitation. If you're sending too much, the ISP might flag you as a spammer. So the ISP is made here to wage a war against spammers and it just want to detect that you are not a spammer. Sending too many emails and bulk will strike a spike in the server, meaning that your uh, emails might not reach people's uh, inboxes. This is maybe a bit technical, but just bear in mind, you should not send too many emails at once. Number two, an email that doesn't reach someone's inbox might be just simply because you don't have the right domain name. Not having the right domain name sounds very obvious, but if you keep on sending an email to someone who doesn't, uh, whose email is not working um, might be a, a tricky part for you because it's going to build your reputation down and you don't want to have this. So something that you note is you have to clean your list regularly. A lot of people open emails uh, because of who sent it to them. Uh, there's a study that showed that 69% uh, of uh, subscribers open an email because of who sent it not necessarily because of the text, not necessarily because of the content or the offer, even though they're important, but what ranks highest is who sent it. So make sure your name is tagged along to the, uh, to the email. And the second part is also the title. Something we use a lot, and I really want to make sure that you use it as well, is the title. It is the first thing that someone sees when they uh, open their inbox. You want to make sure that this is something that triggers their interest, maybe use a question, maybe personalize it with the company or the person's name, just making sure that there is an identification that happens whenever a person reads that, uh, that email. So these are three elements that help you uh, get the open rate, uh, rate higher. Number one, I would say, is uh, the title, just as before. Uh, people will read it and reply because you have a, an, an interesting title that relates to them. Number two is how you personalize your email. A lot of the companies we work with, they typically start with very long emails, a lot of information that in the end, unfortunately, nobody reads. All of us receive many emails, SMS, a text, phone calls, we're distracted. So the shorter email is, the more straight to the point it is, the higher the likelihood for someone to read it um, is there. So you want to have a short email that also goes to one last point, which is the ask. Whenever you send someone an email, you want to ask something. Is it a message on LinkedIn? You also want to ask something because this is what will trigger a reply. It might sound obvious, but a lot of us forget to ask for something in an email. It can be for a meeting, it can be for an advice, it can be for a comment, whatever that is. You want to ask something to the person so that they, you give them an opportunity to come back to you. This is something that we see works quite a lot. And uh, something else uh, that many of you and many of us might forget as well is simply following up. You might send a first email, no answer. Send a second email, so not, no answer. A third one, that one might try to trigger an answer. Keep it short, keep it uh, concise. Make sure that you don't follow up every single day. Keep it spaced in, uh, in time, and that should give you some good results. Mm -hmm.